The Chasseurs a Cheval de Lagarde Imperiale constituted a light cavalry regiment in the consular, then Imperial Guard during the French Consulate and First French Empire respectively. They were the second senior Old Guard cavalry regiment of the Imperial Guard after the Grenadiers a Cheval. The regiment had its origins in the guides raised by General Bonaparte during his Italian campaign of 1796. The regiment was not only known for its lavish uniform, but its combat history as well. Service history When at the end of August 1799 Bonaparte left Egypt to return to France he took with him a detachment of 180 guides a cheval and 125 guides a pied. The men chosen were the most devoted veterans from each company. Soon after the coup d'état TAT of 18 Brummer the guides, who had stayed in the south of France, were summoned to Paris and quartered in the Caserne de Babylone. A decree of 28 November reorganized the Garde du Directoire as the Garde des Consuls, but it makes no mention of the chasseurs. By a decree of 3 January 1800 a company of chasseurs a cheval was created. Its commanding officer was Napoleon's stepson, Captain Eugene de Buhamis, who was promoted major on 5 March. The strength was four officers and 113 men, the latter being chosen from the guides who had returned from Egypt, and 112 were veterans of the Italian campaign of 1796. The cavalry of the Garde Consulaire, two squadrons of grenadiers a cheval and the company of chasseurs, was commanded by chef de brigade Jean-Baptiste Bessières. In May the company left Paris for Italy. It crossed the Great St. Bernard Pass and was heavily engaged at the Battle of Marengo losing 70 out of its 115 horses. At the end of the campaign the corps returned to Paris. By a consular decree of 8 September it was augmented, becoming a squadron of two companies and 234 men. By a decree of 6 August 1801 the corps was increased to a headquarters and two squadrons. The staff was one chef d'escadron, one adjutant major, two port etendard, one brigadier trompette and four maîtres ouvriers. At the end of September the remainder of the guides got back from Egypt and were merged into the corps. By a decree of 14 November the chasseurs became a regiment. In theory the commanding officer was to be a chef de brigade, but in fact Bonaparte retained chef d'escadron Buhamis in command. By decree of 8 March 1802 the headquarters was increased. It now included four standard bearers, a trumpet major, two trumpet corporals and a timblier. By decree of 1 October the regiment was increased to four squadrons, with a total strength of 56 officers and 959 men. Buhamis was promoted chef de brigade, and now had as his squadron commanders Morland, Nicholas Dullman, Frederic August de Buhlman and Joseph Daming, the Negro who had distinguished himself at the Bridge of Arkel in 1796. From the 22nd of March 1803, when summer training began, the men were to parade on horseback every Monday and Thursday at 7.30 a.m., precisely on the Champter Mars. Every Wednesday at the same hour they went through the foot exercise. In winter the parades seemed to have been at 9 a.m. Swimming and rowing were among the exercises carried out in 1802 and 1803. By a decree of 21 January 1804 the regiment was given a major who was to rank with the colonels of the line. The intrepid Moorland was given this appointment. By the same decree the company of Mumluks was attached to the regiment. By an order of the day of 18 May the Gardes Consuls became the Guard Imperiale. On 13 May 1805 Buhamis was made Viceroy of Italy, but he retained nominal command of the regiment until about 1808. Morland now became the actual commanding officer, with the title of Colonel Commandant 10 Second, and Darman was promoted Major. On 17 September a squadron of Velites was created. It seems to have been intended as a kind of holding reinforcement unit. The regiment and the Mamluks greatly distinguished themselves at the Battle of Austerlitz. 
where two squadrons and the Mamluks were led to the charge by Napoleon's senior aide-de-camp, General Rapp, inflicting heavy casualties on the Russian Imperial Guard in capturing Prince Rupnin, the commander of the Chevalier Guard. At Austerlitz the Chasseurs suffered 19 officer casualties, including Colonel Morland, killed, and three squadron commanders wounded. Dahlman now succeeded Morland, and Claude Etienne Guyot became major. The regiment missed the Battle of Jena, where the first Hussars had the privilege of escorting the Emperor. The Chasseurs did, however, take part in Napoleon's triumphal entry into Berlin. At Eilor the regiment took part in Murat's great charge of 80 squadrons, which relieved the pressure on the French centre at the crisis of the battle. Seventeen of the officers were hit. In addition Darman was mortally wounded. He had recently been promoted general, but having no command he asked to be allowed to lead his old regiment and fell at their head. Major Guyot commanded the regiment for the rest of the year, and Thierry was also promoted major. On 18 January 1808, General de Brigade Charles Lefebvre Desnoets replaced Darman in command of the regiment. The regiment was in Madrid when the populace rose on 2 May and eight of the officers, including Major Pierre Domesnil, were wounded as well as five officers of the Mamluks. The regiment took part in General Montbrun's charge up the road at Somos Sierra but lost no officers for the Spanish gunners only managed to get off. One salvo before the Polish and French cavalry got amongst him with the sabre. On 28 November Napoleon, engaged in pressing the retreat of Sir John Moore towards Corona, rode ahead of his army into the village of Valdera, which the British had quit but two hours previously. He was accompanied only by his staff and a squadron of the chasseurs. When Marshal Ney found that the Emperor had thus exposed himself he said to him, Sire, I thank your majesty for acting as my advance guard. That it had been imprudent was proved next day when General Lefebvre Desnoets caught up with the British rear guard, forded the river Esla and drove in their pickets, only to be rudely counter-attacked by Lord Paget who led his men under cover of the houses of Benevente to assail the French flank. Lefebvre Desnoets, wounded by a pistol shot, was taken prisoner. The regiment had six other officers hurt and two captains taken, besides 55 chasseurs killed and wounded and 73 captured. To be outflanked and cut up in this fashion was a rude and novel experience for the Emperor's favourite children. The British cavalry who achieved this feat were the 10th Hussars with pickets of the 18th and the 3rd Hussars of the King's German Legion. Their losses amounted to no more than 50. It was this affair more than anything that convinced the Emperor that more had slipped from his clutches. It was time to return to France. The regiment was at home again by the end of February 1809. About this time it absorbed the chevaliers of the Grand Duke of Berg, formerly the Guides de Murat and the Guides du Marec en Mortier. On 5 June Major Guyot became Colonel Commandant 10 second. Thierry was made General de Brigade in the line and, on 13, Domesnil and Hercule Corps by no were promoted majors. At Wagram the Guard cavalry supported the right flank of Macdonald's great column which struck the decisive blow. The regiment suffered at Wagram having five officers killed and ten wounded, including the two newly promoted majors, each of whom lost a leg. Colonel Guyot was promoted General de Brigade, retaining the command, and Colonel Jean Dudonne Lyon was brought in as third major of the corps. 1810 was a quiet year, with only one officer wounded escorting prisoners in Spain. On 1 August 1811 the regiment was increased to five squadrons and the Velites were done away with. During the year squadrons were sent successively to serve with the divisions of the guard in Spain. Guyot was promoted General de Division, but still retained the command. To replace Corps by No and Domes Neil as Majors the regiment received Colonel Francois d'Aurenville and General Baron Axelmans. On 6 May 1812 General Lefebvre Desnoets, who had escaped by breaking his parole, returned from his captivity in England and resumed command of the regiment. 
The chasseurs, five squadrons and the company of Mumluks went through the Russian campaign, but though they lost 500 men, they only had 10 officers hit. At Borodino they had no officer casualties at all, but on 25 October, the day after the Battle of Malo Yaroslavitz two squadrons, escorting the Emperor on a reconnaissance, were sharply engaged and had four officers wounded. A body of Cossacks appeared suddenly from a wood and charged straight at Napoleon. General Rapp and the escort managed to beat them off, but not before one had fought his way to within 20 yards of the Emperor. From this day forth, haunted by the fear of captivity, he always carried a bag of poison on a string about his neck. The regiment's losses in this campaign must on the whole be attributed not so much to the fighting as to the Russian climate. In 1813 the regiment was expanded from five to nine squadrons.